guys? Welcome back. It's Biggs, the Mad Aquarist. Today we're going to talk about one specific species of fish. It's been given a very, very unfortunate common name. Pseudochelsius kybersi, the aptly named measles tetra. Really? Measles tetra? That's the best common name we could come up with this beautiful species of fish? Was uh, Ebola tetra already taken or is that reserved for an African species? How about malaria tetra? Ooh, that sounds catchy. No, this one's been called the measles tetra. I think the other common name of the pink spotted choco tetra is a lot better than measles, but who am I to say? Or simply call it the Kyberzi tetra. This beautiful Colombian tetra is named in honor of William A. Kybers, a Colombian exporter of tropical fish. This is the gentleman that discovered and brought to the public trade the Emperor tetra, another beautiful kerosene that we all know known to love. This unique and although rarely seen in the trade kerosene is actually fairly prolific in its natural headwaters of Colombia's Pacific coastal drainages. It inhabits the San Juan, Calama, Mira, Canjabre, Hurumangai, and Anchinaya river systems. Now, I clearly have probably butchered absolutely every single one of those. So look at the pictures and you'll have a clue where they are. And that way you can plan a weekend little excursion, go collect them yourself. This beauty, this beauty is actually fairly robust. It's about a three inch species. And it's very, very boisterous, and it's going to develop a strong pecking order in your aquarium. It's ideally suited for a species tank or a big public display. In the normal home aquarium, these are likely to bully or nip at some of the smaller or more fragile tank mates, and are best kept in a similarly sized, fast-moving fish. Perhaps a pair or a group of mid-sized acara-type cichlids, or sevrums or something, uh, armored loricarian catfish, such as your different types of plecos and stuff, these would all probably make ideal tank mates for them. Kybersi tetras are a true softwater or blackwater species, and are their best colors will only shine through if provided with the proper water conditions. I at home use straight RO water uh, and then use the different addition of blackwater extract and botanicals to create that wonderful and pleasing environment that lets them really shine through. Optimal water temperatures are best maintained between 23 to 26 degrees Celsius or 73 79 degrees Fahrenheit if you use that scale. True omnivores, the Kyberzi tetras will readily, readily accept almost any prepared food whatsoever, but they really will only thrive in, in, in captivity if given the occasional frozen or even better live foods. Bloodworms, brine shrimp, tube effects, uh, any, sort of, any sort of insect larvae, uh, mice shrimp, any of those things would be, all be beneficial and really help to condition them. I'm actually extremely fond of all these new prepared foods incorporating insect larvae into them and have had a great success in using them with this particular species. Breeding this species is somewhat more challenging than others, more typical kerosens, due to its sheer size and aggressive prey drive. Being an egg scatterer, the male and female will come together and they will spawn mid-water and then they'll just release eggs and sperm together and then the, the eggs are on their own. So unless you have a, a very lushly planted aquarium, there's a lot of refuge for those eggs or offspring, the parents are more than likely just going to gobble up that beautiful source of protein right away before they even have a chance. The Kyberzi tetras will not harm any plants whatsoever in your tank. So hopefully you've enjoyed this little peek at, uh, to a unique little species with a very unfortunate common name. If you know of any other species of fish that have really, really unfortunate common names, I'd love to hear from you in, your com in the comments. Leave me a note. Now we think about things like the convict cichlid or the Jack Dempsey's, but those are fish from back in the day when a big aquarium was a 10, maybe a 20 gallon tank. You try and keep some of those things in those little small tanks back in the day. It was really, really challenging. But measles tetra? Really? Okay, teach his own. Thank you. Enjoy.